Hey, St. Paul, welcome to chapel once again. We always begin in a certain way, don't we? We always begin with a powerful name of God as we do that. And we're centered around, I'm, I'm right here at the baptismal font because that's something we want to remember of who we are, that we are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in that, we were brought into the city of God. And as we get to see this, buildings of all shapes and sizes, three-year-old all the way through the eighth grade, children of God. So we begin this chapel in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, we are in our Advent season. Let's see, we're lighting our first candle. Remember the first week? What was that candle for? Hmm, what was it? First candle for hope. Let's sing about that. Light one candle for hope, one bright candle for hope. He brings hope to every heart. He comes, he comes. All right, and then week two, what did we celebrate in week two? Just like our number two, the peace sign. We light candle two. Light one candle for peace, one bright candle for peace. He brings peace to every heart. He comes, he comes. And now week three, guess what week we're in right now? We're in the week three, and it's the special candle. It's the pink candle. What's that stand for? Joy. It's our joy candle. Light one candle for joy. One bright candle for joy. Every nation will find salvation in Bethlehem's baby boy. This coming Sunday, we're going to start our fourth week of Advent. So we get to light our fourth candle this Sunday. What is our fourth candle? For love. Light one candle for love. One bright candle for love. He brings love to every heart. He comes. He comes. He brings love to every heart. He comes. He comes. Here's our preview. Guess what's coming? Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We celebrate Jesus' birthday. And we celebrate that by lighting the white candle, the Christ candle, in the center of our Advent wreath. Let's sing together, Away in a Manger. before the Christmas break. It will be brought to you from our early childhood children. You know, I bet you all remember a time back when you were their age and you got to perform. Well, this year was a little bit different and, different, and we recorded it. And the children were so excited to share this with you. And you know, it was fun to watch your Christmas service too for those of you from first through eighth grade. And you brought a wonderful message. Well, we have a special message also entitled The Signs of Christmas. And as you go around town, maybe you've seen different signs. They tell you to stop. They tell you where to go. They tell you if things are busy. Well, we're going to take a walk around and look at some different signs of Christmas. So sit back and enjoy as we bring our special Christmas message to you this morning.
think we're in Boca anymore. Where are we? Dude, look, there's a sign over there. Maybe it'll tell us where we are. It says Nazareth. How did we get here? Excuse me, pardon me, coming through. What's that sign over there? It says one way. It's supposed to direct traffic. Hey, where's everyone going? Haven't you heard? A decree was just issued by Caesar Augustus that everybody should go back to the town they were born in to be counted. Now I have to help direct traffic out of Nazareth. You better watch out. It's about to get very crowded on this road. Thank you for your help. What should we do now? I guess we should go along. What's that sign over there? That's a donkey crossing sign. See, back then they didn't have boats, trains, cars, or uh, airplanes. They had to travel by donkey, if they had one. Hey look, there's Mary now, traveling with Joseph to go to Bethlehem, I think. They better go quickly, because I think Mary's about to have a baby soon. Maybe we should go too. We better hurry, that sign over there says it's 90 miles to Bethlehem. Yes, let's go! All the inns are full. That's why Mary and Joseph had to stay in a stable, because there was no room for them in the inn. A stable? What's a stable? A stable is like a barn where animals stay. That night, in a stable, Jesus was born. Wait, you mean to tell me that Jesus is born in a barn? Yes, and Mary wrapped him in swaddling clothes and placed him in a manger. What is a manger? A manger is a place where they would put hay for the animals to eat. And that what Jesus said? Yes, it was a warm and safe place for Jesus to spend the night.
excuse me, pardon me. Keep coming through. shepherds to see baby Jesus. How do I know about the newborn baby? Well, they said they were just minding their own business, watching their flocks by night, when the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. I bet that was amazing! Well, actually, they were frightened, but the angel said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news, a great joy that will be for all people. Today in the city of Bethlehem, a Savior has been born, who is Christ the Lord. Then many angels appeared, and they sang, Glory to God in the highest. The shepherds left immediately to go out to the newborn king. Maybe we can follow them so we can see baby Jesus too. Let's go! Well, the shepherds are going to spread the good news about everything that they have seen and heard. I will spread the good news too. Me sign to share with you. A cross? What does a cross have to do with Christmas? Well, the reason God sent his one and only son to the earth as a baby born in Bethlehem was to be our Savior. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Wow, that is great news! 
It is. I better get going now, and I think you should probably be heading home too. Your parents are probably worried about you. It's been a wonderful journey with you all. Thank you for showing us the signs of Christmas. we thank you for this day and we thank you for this joyous time as we celebrate the birth of your son and we thank you for sending him into this world to be our savior and lord as we go out now and take our break for christmas we just pray that you would be with each and every one of us keep us safe keep us healthy over this christmas season but above all help us to remember the reason that we celebrate and that is that we have a savior who was born in a manger on that very first Christmas, who lived a perfect life and then died on a cross to take away our sins. May that joy of Christmas be with us always. In your name we pray, amen. Now, St. Paul, it's time to go in peace. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And... Wait, 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 wait. There has to be one more thing we do. It's one hoof, two hoof, none. I said I always like to play this game, and so I appreciate you joining me in. A little bit of understanding of what this game is all about for maybe some of you that are new or that you don't remember from last year. Don't play it too often. But it is called One Hoof, Two Hoof, or None. Okay? And so we're going to walk through it of being able to know that there's going to be music that comes on. When the music comes on, you have to choose. In your mind, you have to raise your hoof if it's just one hoof. If you think that it's going to be two hoof, then you raise two hoofs. If you don't think it's going to be none, like this screen says, then you put your hands down. You have to make that choice when the music is going. So we'll do a trial real quick. Let's do a trial. Ready? Here it comes. You got to choose. You got to choose what you want to do. I want to do one hoof. You want to do one hoof? It's up. Here we go. Ready? Ah, two hoofs. All right. You know what that means? That means that I would probably be sitting down at this time. And so, that's the way the game goes. If you don't get it right from what this is uh, choosing, then you have to sit down. And we're going to come to a winner to be able to say that they've done one hoof to hoof or none throughout this whole time. We're going to keep going. All right, you ready, teachers? All right, you get ready, being able to look your eyes around. Everybody ready? The music goes, one hoof to hoof or none. We're going to go through this a couple times. You ready? Here we go. One hoof to hoof or none. Which one? None. Two hoof, again. All right, if you didn't choose two hoof, that means you have to sit down. But if you had two hands up in the air, you're staying up. Let's go again. One 
hoof. One hoof, stay up, standing. One hoof. All right, everybody else, sit down. Here we go. Let's get a winner. None. None. If you had none up in the air, that means that you are won that round. That means you can stay standing. If you already have a winner at this time in your classroom, yay! If not, here comes another one. One hoof, stay standing, or, or crown the, the winner, right? We're gonna do one more time, hey teachers. If, here, here's a little toolage on this. If you don't have a winner by this next one, you can rewind backwards and they might not remember which one it is. But if they do, they got great memories, all right? So we'll do one more time and then you can use it at your discretion. crowned a winner. Hey, St. Paul, Jesus loves you. He is with you, Emmanuel, with you. Have a great Christmas. We'll see you in the new year.